when you are hiring people, I think that one of the biggest, this is one of the coolest things I've learned. So um, if you have a pen and paper, grab it real quick, because this is, this is pretty cool. So when I first started hiring, I was someone who would get on the phone with someone and I would just expect to hire them right away. Because we all know that this is, this is a dialing business. If you want to grow a big team and you want to get to that next mark, you got to bring in new people. And how you do that is your process to it. There has to be something that you can duplicate so that the people that you're bringing in who want to grow a team, you can say, here's exactly what you need to do. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Rainmaker podcast. And we got a special guest for you, another lady boss and Ashley Gromberg on how to have your best year ever. Ashley, thank you so much for hopping on. Welcome to the podcast. No, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I've been yeah. seeing what you're doing. And I when you have reached out, I was like, I'm all in on this. So thank you. I appreciate you reaching out. For sure, for sure. Well, let's go ahead and jump right in. So take me back to the beginning. When did you realize that you were different and you didn't want to go the traditional route and you wanted to go on entrepreneurship uh, for yourself and you got that itch? Yeah, so, you know, I was one of the lucky ones who uh, this entrepreneurship journey kind of fell in my lap. So I didn't really grow up um, thinking, you know, I'm going to do big things. I'm going to be an entrepreneur and I'm going to start my business. Uh, for me, at the time, someone had reached out and introduced uh, the insurance business to me, basically just said it's a commission-based sales job uh, and you have the opportunity to make a hundred grand. And I was like, cool, I don't really have anything else that sounds like that. You can make your own schedule, you know, you can do your own thing, travel around, um, you know, all over the country and, and sell right. insurance. And right. at the time, I didn't really have anything else. And so it was one of those situ situations where it fell in my lap. Um, but I always was, you know, I was a go-getter. I was outgoing. I always wanted to uh, meet new people, make more money. You know, whenever I was working a traditional job, it was property management. Um, I was I was in property management and I served, bartended, always did something on the side to kind of bring in some extra cash. Right. So, right. you know, I was definitely about the money. I was definitely more about the time and the freedom that it would it would bring if you kind of could do it for that 10 year run. Right. Uh, so really it was just, it was something that had fallen in my lap as an opportunity to not have to go to work from nine to five, not realizing at the time I'd be going to work from, you know, 8am to like midnight some nights. So, yeah, you yeah, know. for sure. And so, um, had you done, had you had any previous experience in sales or anything like that? I had a little bit in sales. We would have people walk through the door, you know, looking for an apartment and, I always wanted to put on my A game, do the best I could because you got to make, you know, a 15 or $30 extra commission for leasing an apartment. So things like that. But also I always talk about the hospitality industry and serving tables or being a bartender. Just that business in general is 100% sales. You know, everyone, mm. every tail, every tail, every table that you yes. have. I'm a goof, by the way, you guys, you guys yeah. are going to get a lot of that. <laughs> uh, every table that you walk up to, you know, you're, you're making a sale right there. Are you going to get a 15% tip? Are you going to get an 18, a 20%, you know, are you going to leave a mint, come back, bring another mint, you don't get a 25% tip. So I've, I kind of realized that everything was sales, you know, most of my life I was selling people to like me, selling my teachers that I was a good student, you know, selling my parents that I was doing homework, whatever. <laughs> so I've always been in sales. I've been in Girl Scouts since I was little. So yeah, for sure. And it's funny that you say that because um, I was in the service industry for uh, 12 years also. And what mm. happens is, is you understand these patterns of people and you learn how to build trust and relationships really quickly, get them in, get them serviced and get them out. And over that time period, you just you learn how to deal with a ton of ter per uh, deal with a ton. You rubbing off of me, <laughs> deal with a ton right? of personalities and you don't realize that that muscle there, it, it allows you to be able to be comfortable in any kind of situation. So that's awesome. So um, so let's talk about like, you know, what were the first, you know, 90 days like for you in the insurance business? Ooh, that's a good question. First 90 days, I ran pretty fast. Uh, we had this motto that was get to your first 100 appointments as fast as you can because they're all practice. And so I was really on a mission to do that. My first 90 days uh, I was, you know, I, I was definitely not hanging out with my friends a ton. I was just trying to perfect my craft. I just wanted to get good as fast as I could. Um, so then it became like riding a bike. You know, mm. I understood that if this person who came in 
could do it, that I could do it. I did have that belief, but I will say a lot of times my actions didn't uh, follow that belief. You know, my, one of one of our leaders um, and founders of our agency, shout out Gage Peart, he always talks about behavior follows belief, right? right. And so right. I had that kind of roller coaster of belief, you know, at, at times, but uh, the first 90 days I ran hard. I listened to what people said. They said book 30 appointments, I book 30 appointments. If they said you got to get at least 20 Facebook leads, I bought at least 20 Facebook leads, found a way to get them, you know, and I exhausted every resource that I had in the beginning. Right. And that's so right. key. You know, I was, if someone didn't show up to my appointment, I was running in person at the time, dude, I would be door knocking until it was dark in the middle of nowhere. My dad had my location. I was fine. You know, um, right. Right. I, you know, I just exhausted my resources and I ran really hard and it was difficult. Uh, but I will say my first 90 days became a lot easier when I actually hired my first agent mm. because it became more than about me and I love a team. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to watch people beside me grow a team. I wanted one too. So I brought people in and it forced me to work even harder and go after, you know, what it is that I, what I started. Gotcha. And so what age did you actually get into the business? So 2018. So I was, I was 25. Wow. Gotcha. I just, just turned 30. Yeah, for sure. Well, welcome to the club. So I'm almost out of the club. So um, enjoy it while you can. But uh, so you, you, you get into business at 25. You run real fast for your first 90 days. At that point, you end up getting uh, you hiring your first uh, team member. So now you, you, the, this cause isn't just about you. It's about helping this other person. Um, to have success being a leader for them, which now you thrust into a role where you got to become a better leader, right? So now here comes this growth and opportunity. So at, at what month or what year in the business did things click for you when you realized like, oh, I'm going to be good at this and I'm going to make a bunch of money? Mm, that's a good question. I, I would definitely have to say after my first month, because it's all I did all day, every single day. So, I mean, I believe me, I had, I had moments of doubt, you know, from that moment till now, of course, different levels to break through. But I have to say after that first month, because I, I did run so hard at it, you right. know, I didn't have a plan B I was talking to this about my team the other day. I said, this might be irresponsible, but I've never been a plan B kind of girl. Mm. You know, I've, I've been a, just go don't have a backup plan and that comes from your responsibility as well you know i've learned my lesson in not having plan b's in certain scenarios but in this case it was you know plan a or plan b was what go back to my job and and serve tables and hopefully get you know an extra five bucks on a tip because i brought him <laughs> walk i don't know like you know that was plan b and that sounded so I got a taste, you know, I got a taste of it. I made it like 20,000 my first month. Um, wow. But, well, but yeah, I've got to so, say it's, you know, it's, there's a lot behind that too. We can dive into that too, but. Yeah, for sure. Let me just piggyback on that point that you made, right? And so a lot of times what, what happens that is a gap between people's success is, is they got, they have one foot in and one foot out. And um, that's usually the biggest um, the factor in your success is limiting you because you only have 100 percent energy. And if you've got 50 percent energy over here and 50 percent over here, those things can, can only maximize at 50 percent. But if you use that 100 percent, you go all in and you got the mindset uh, in the words of my, my boy, shout out to Nehemiah Davis. It has to work or it has to work when you have that mindset and you burn the boats like Tony Robbins says, then ultimately you know, the action and the success is definitely going to be on you. And eventually, if you keep doing something long enough, you're actually going to get good at it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, too, I was just thinking about is I know that this business is hard. And if you're in a place right now where this business is is kicking your butt and you're like, you know what, I, I just don't know if it's for me. Try this trick of reprogramming your brain to thinking that not everything you do has to be a struggle. Like you don't have to struggle in order to succeed. What I mean by that, and I've heard this so many times in my life, people will say, you know, you've got to, it's going to be hard all the way through, through and through. This is going to be tough. But I think what that does is that actually creates 
this idea in your mind that every single thing you do, every move you're going to make is going to be painful and you're always going to have a hard time achieving it. But right. why should it be like that? Right. I think first you form um, attitudes and then they form you. So you have to fall, you're going to hear all the time, you have to fall in love with, uh, I'm sorry, you have to fall in love with the process, but truly your attitude behind everything is going to drive you. You know, if you, if you think that your dial, like if, if, if you're someone who says, I don't like dialing the phones, but I do it, fall in love with dialing the phones, fall in love with hiring an assistant to dial the phones for you, you know? Um, but most of the time people are right when they say that they're going to struggle. And that's just because that's, you know, because they don't know what they're doing yet, but I don't really necessarily think it has to be hard. There's always easier ways of doing things. And I think what that is a lot of times is getting behind a right team, hiring a coach, hiring a mentor, getting, you know, getting advice from someone other than the person who brought you in because they're only one person, right? Yeah, 100%. And so 20K in your first month, wow, that's impressive. And you said you wanted to kind of dive a little bit deeper into that. So let's go ahead and, and, and talk about what happened after that. Yeah, so uh, the 20K, the 20K in my first month, I always, you know, I always thought that would be the least I made, you know, but there were months where I, I slacked off and um, I got excited and I went to Mexico because I just made 20K, you know, but looking back, um, I know I would have been able to um, have a, a few more personal and professional breakthroughs if I kind of would have kept on going with that momentum because momentum is such a crazy thing in this business. Motivation can only go so far, but when you've right. got momentum, you're on fire, you mm. know? And I think that um, a after that 20K, what it looked like, I guess, from there is I went, um, started hiring, started building a team. So my first year uh, with the team, we did about 115,000. Um, and I'm sorry, 150,000 in issue paid premium year one, year two. Um, we had just climbed up to 1.2 million. Um, and then that following third year, year full year of building um we ended up doing and this is um this is issue paid per month mm. then we got to four million a month wow. so you know you know that i mean and that was that was absolutely still is life-changing you know to have a team of 1200 agents um you know working with you that your team's attracted and you've attracted and but you know, there was a, there was a moment for me where I had to make a pivot and I actually, um, walked away from a team, um, that I had built to, you know, about 1500 writing agents to starting with one. Yeah. So for that's, sure. that's what 2022 has been is kind of, uh, starting and building from the ground up again. Um, so, you know, yeah. sometimes you got to make changes, but I'm, I'm glad that, uh, even with those, those numbers, you know, you can, you can make things happen after that too. Yeah, and I'm glad. And so, but but I don't want to to gloss over that because, um, you know, uh, Alex Omozi says that the first billion is always the hardest, and then after that, it's just like you've got three things that you need to scale. You need to scale your skill set, your characters, your uh, uh, character traits, and then your mindset. So if you've already done all the hard work, now, you know, the vehicle doesn't really matter because you have acquired the the experience, the, the, the knowledge and the, the what not to do is which is most important on um, how to build a team. So you can definitely um, do it again. But I, but I want to kind of go back to you, you got up to how much um, at one point? Hey, I just want to break in here for just a couple of seconds. If you're a life insurance agent that wants to go from zero to 100K per month, I need you to listen up. We have a free course that you can grab right now. The link is in the description for this video. You're going to get over 30 hours of training and deep dive instruction on how you can do this. It is the best performing piece that we have that is absolutely free to life insurance agents to take them from where they are 100k plus every month follow these instructions grab the course it's called life insurance agent university per month so we were doing five million a month mm. so i mean that's that's a really quick thing in, in three years how what are some of the things that um what are some of the ingredients that 
were able to help you ca uh, catapult to such a high level to have um, a team that is producing five billion per year. Yeah, you know what? It came so we did. We ended up doing uh, thirty five million in twenty 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 one, five million a month, and that was all a hundred percent a collective of the team. And I know you know people are going to say that all the time, but truly, there was no way I was going to be able to do that by myself, right? right. We, we created this really, really great environment of sharing the opportunity with everybody, you know, and that was, that was something that started from the top down. You know, we would share it with the server. We would share it everywhere. Um, but the, the key I think was we had a lot of people who were working on kind of like what you were just saying. We had a lot of people working on things that other people couldn't take away from them. Right. We, a lot of the people that were, were growing this team were, you know, a part of this build were um, working on things like their character and how you show up and what your energy is like. And collectively for a while, that, that energy was so key. Cause I think that there's, there's one lingering attitude of the team, right. That's going around. Right. And like you always gotta, you always have to make sure that that's a positive thing in order to keep building and climbing. And we just had such a great energy and we had great um, we had a system to plug people into. That was huge too. You know, we just, we didn't, once we started to grow, we started to build systems and trainings around, um, you know, how to make your first sale. And yeah. the one thing is, is we, we didn't steer, steer away from the fact that someone came into this because they, they need to make money. They want to make money. And so we helped them get their first sale. That was the biggest thing. A lot of times people come in and they'll say, you know, send us your top five, you know, hires that you want to hire and they want to build so bad that they're trying to get you to recruit your friends and family. That's cool. But these people need to make money, you know? So we were just on a mission to help people make money and spread it like wildfire. And we just had so many people spreading it at the same time that it had no choice but to, to skyrocket. Yeah, 100%. And so um, a lot of people and a lot of agents that are going to be watching this are right, um, probably in between that 200 to about 500k per month with their agency right and so uh i always want to make sure that this podcast is um, valuable and the free content is way more valuable than anybody's paid and so i want to really kind of focus on a couple tangible things so what are maybe a few steps if i'm if i'm a newer agent and i'm looking to get to that million dollar per month and it's like if you do these three to five things right and you focus on this particularly you know, then you'll be able to do that over the next six to 12 months. Yeah, for sure. So the, the first thing I'll, I'll say, let's do this. So the, the number one thing is you have to be looking for new agents. Okay. Cause you have to follow the, the action. People are going to tell you a million things, right? Mm -hmm. I dialed the phones. I made 200 dials. I did 300. They need to show you that they're doing that. If you, if you have a feeling that someone's telling you something and it's not, you know, maybe it's over exaggerated and it's not the truth. You have to follow yourself on that and, and get to, to hiring, um, new people because the reality is, is people get stuck at this point because they want to pull people up that they've been in this thing with for a long time. But the reality is, is a lot of times those people are pulling them down. So mm. you have to, you know, you got to take a bird's eye view perspective and say, okay, is this person giving me energy or are they draining my energy? And one, one of the key things is you have to look for the right people. You don't want to be desperate to hire everyone. Like you've got to ask challenging questions. And if, and if you're just trying to hire someone to get volume, it's not going to work. Just like if you're just going to try to make a sale to make a sale and make some commission, it's not going to work. They're going to cancel. They're going to fall off. Same thing with hiring. We're, we, our hiring system now is so different. We're asking questions like, are you going to be able to commit to hopping on our virtual office either between eight and noon or five and nine with your camera on because no one shows up to a physical office with a mask on. So we want to make sure your camera's on, you're engaging our team, mm. right? We set proper expectations. Um, we also create a clear vision and, and help our team members set goals. Now, whereas before, like, I want to, I want to point this out. I had a girl reach out to me the other day and she's like, I just cannot seem to grow. I'm stuck. She's at 500 K. She's, she's like, I can't grow. I'm just stuck. And I said, look, if you could tune out the thought 
the thoughts that come into your mind that say, I have to catch up to so-and-so or I've got to get here, you know, it's not working. If you could tune out the feeling of needing to catch up in such a high paced environment, you might start to grow, wow. you know? But when you feel like you're playing catch up with everyone else and you're looking around, like you see all the time people will say, where you are today is where you would have dreamed you were a year ago. Hmm. So the th you got to fall in love with the process and you, and you can't compare yourself to other people. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm smiling now. So we're on the same page because I always tell all my agents and they roll their eyes. I'm like, uh, well, I watched a documentary on, on The Last Dance and the thing that Michael Jordan said that made him the best was he was doing all these promotions and com commercials and, and talk shows and all these things and his game was falling off. And once he cut out all of that noise, right, trying to be popular and he focused on the thing that he loved the most, he was like, what is it? It's the game. And when he fell back in love with the game and focused on that, then that's when he ascended to the greatest basketball player of all time. And I can remember listening to a story, a conversation with Inky Johnson, where he's talking to A.J. Brown, who was a wide receiver here in Tennessee uh, for the Titans. And he was looking for a new contract and he was looking for a big payday of like 100 mil. And then at the end of that year, he was like, Inky, man, um, I'm, I'm not having the, the, the production that I wanted. And the first thing he asked him was if everything was equal and we took out the end goal is the work that you're putting in worthy of the success that you're going after right Ooh. the process and if everything was equal and you focused on that and you made that your goal right then you, then the rest would take care of itself and of course he went on to get a hundred million dollars from the philadelphia eagles and i tell people um because i know you've seen this on on social right there's this image of two people walking and it's just like two stick figures and one person's in the middle and one person's at the end. And it's the person who loves walking is always going to walk further than the person is walk walking for a go. So I'm glad that you said falling back in love with the process because that's the most important thing. Dude, it is the, it, it is the, the thing. Yeah. 100%. It's not, it's not falling in love with like what's going to happen when you achieve this great thing and you get to a million. How's it going to feel? Dude, I will tell you right now from my experience, hitting a million a month, two million a month, 75K coming in my bank account at one time, you know, on, on the 15th of the month. Cool. I got high for a second and then all of a sudden it went away. Yeah. So let's talk and, about and, that because a lot of people don't talk about the money, right? Where it's like, because there's levels to this, right? Because there's one that's like, we're doing things out of desperation. And then there's like, okay, I'm cool. The light stuff is paid. I got a little bit in the bank, but I'm not wealthy, but I'm going to go and buy something so I can kind of keep up with the Joneses. Like I might buy a little roly or something. And then there's the FU money where it's like, if I don't do anything, I got money in the bank, I'm good. And mm -hmm. so when you have that kind of uh, injection into your, your bank where you no longer um, have this dependency on money because it's, you know, it's just flowing in, how do you stay sharp? How do you stay on the ground? How do you stay focused when you got 75K coming in twice a month? Yeah, well, I think it has a lot to do with 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 what I want to do with the money for sure. I mean, there's there's uh, so much more that I want to do with my money than 75K. You know, you hear people like Tony Robbins, who's like feeding a billion families or a billion meals or something like that. Like that to me is just so attractive. I love hearing about what people do with their money on that level. Um, I've talked about this before, uh, but, you know, my dad, he has built orphanages in Haiti for the last nine years. He just spent his last summer in Africa. Like, I'm trying to go out there with him and do some big things, mm. you know, so that that keeps me going uh, for sure. He had two daughters. I like to keep the Gronberg name in the family for him somehow, you know, create some sort of uh, foundation with him. Um, so we've got some ideas with that. But but also changing your perspective around money is so big, right? Mm. Like a lot of people. A lot, of, a lot of people grew up thinking that, you know, people with money are, are selfish or, you know, they, they, they just love money. I think the, the love for money might be the root of all evil, but, but, but money is not the root of all evil, right? Yeah. It's, it's what makes our world go round. But my perspective, a lot of the times too, that helped me was, and my dad corrected me the other day. I said, you know, I had this much come in, whatever. And he said, you did or your business did? I was like, Ooh, dad, you are right. The business did. You yeah. know, and my biggest thing is I stopped talking about my money, what I was making, and I would say the money or the business made this, right? And that yeah. perspective changed because that engine, that business, that needed that money, right? Yeah, 100%. It needed, it needed to keep money there. So, 
I mean, there's, there's, there's a few, there's a few things, but I think also when we talk about momentum, once you get that momentum going, it's just natural. It keeps going. But when you stop and go and stop and go, then that's where you get that, like, why not? I've got, you know, I got 75 K I'm good to go. Yeah. You start justifying why you could spend it. Cause you know, you got other money coming in and then, you know, that's the slippery slope to and we call that lifestyle creep. But I want to piggyback on what you just said because you made a good point there, which is number one, you know, you, you got to have a good mindset. And a lot of people have a negative mindset about money because they're comparing themselves or their their current situation with somebody else's uh, current situation. And now you start to come up with these assumptions on how they got it and what they did to get it. And if they got their trust fund or if they did something shysty. And I tell people all the time, if you have a negative uh, mindset towards money, you're never going to get it because money wants to be, uh, wants to be attracted to somebody that one knows how to, knows how to attract it, knows what to do with it, to deploy it. And that can multiply. And so that's like that first, that's just like the, the bare minimum stage of just jumping out of like the average nine to five mindset is you got to change your mindset around money, right? It's an abundance, right? They're print, they print it trillions of it over the last couple of years so it's not going anywhere it's just how can you put yourself in a position to get it absolutely i love that and i think another point to bring up with that too is you have to start uh uncovering the person that um that people want to be around when conversations about money get brought up right like there's this there's a saying or i don't know if it's a saying or if i thought of it but let's it's something around um become so valuable that in a room of opportunity, your name gets brought up, right? So the more value you can bring to your marketplace, the more value you can bring to your team, you know, the, the more it's gonna, that, that's how it flows in. You know, if you're someone that just takes, take, takes all the time, you know, that's what you need in the beginning. You need someone to, to give you all they've got and then you go implement. But once you learn something, you gotta share it, right? The people who keep all the secrets, nah, get out of here. We need it. We need the secrets. You know, if you got if you got tips and tricks on how you were able to get this this uh, policy through with a certain carrier, even though they were prescribed this, share that with a team. You know, how'd you how'd you go through that? So the more value you can bring, I think the more money you're going to make. And then, um, you know, you can kind of start to create this ecosystem where it's um, like I said, starts to flow in. Yeah, 100 percent. And so I think that like with that kind of going into step two, because you're an action taker and most people that are successful, they have an extreme sense of urgency. And I heard um, Eric Thomas say that um, you want to take advantage of an opportunity of a lifetime in the lifetime of the opportunity, which means you need to seize that opportunity now. And the only way that you can do that is, is one is removing that attachment to the money. Right. Having an abundance mindset to be able to give and to serve. Right. And then the awareness to be open to the opportunity when it presents themselves so that you can take action right then. Because a lot of times people are always praying for something. And then when it comes across their desk, it comes across their doorstep. You know what? Oh, they got this negative mindset about what could happen. And again, you, the Grant Cardone says you commit now and figure out the rest later for sure. Mm hmm. No, that is so true. I love that. Come in now, figure out. I always heard like create a mess and, and clean it up later. And it's, it's true. I mean, you want to set yourself up properly as far as business goes, you know, as far like your formations, things like that, like protect yourself, make sure you pay your taxes. Don't, when people say run through a wall, I'm like, I got to specify a lot of things in our industry are like, just figure it out later. Well, when it comes to legal stuff, figure that out now. Yeah. You know, 100%. Along, along, along the way, but you don't, you don't need to know everything in order to take the first step and when it comes to building a team, people will ask all the time, well, like, I don't think I'm ready. And I'm like, look, it, you don't need to know step one to step 10 in order to hire someone at step one. While they're going through step one that you already know, now you prepare and you learn step two or three. That way, when they're ready, you're ready to teach them two, three, right? Same in the coaching world. You don't need to know everything before you go out there and bring value to someone. Yeah, right? 100 percent. I agree with that 100 percent. So transition into um, the three things. Right. So one is changing your mindset about money. And then two, if you learn something, you need to share with other people. So what would be kind of the third one that you would kind of um, wrap this up with? I would say. Changing. So changing your perspective when you are hiring people, I think that one of the biggest, this is one of the coolest things I've learned. So um, if you have a pen and paper, grab it real quick, because this is, this is pretty cool. So when I first started hiring, 
I was someone who would get on the phone with someone and I would just expect to hire them right away. Cause we all know that this is, this is a dialing business. If you want to grow a big team and you want to get to that next mark, you got to bring in new people. And how you do that is your process to it. There has to be something that you can duplicate so that the people that you're bringing in who want to grow a team, you can say, here's exactly what you need to do. Right. And so there's, there's this book by Eric war and it's called go pro. And he has write this down poser, amateur professional. Okay, so there's three types of recruiters, three types of people who expose the business to people. Poser, they get on the phone and they just expect to hire someone right away, right? You get on and, you're and you share all the opportunity, you pour your heart out, you're super excited, and at the end of the call, um, you know, they don't sign up. So you start to think, okay, this doesn't work. You know, this isn't for me. Then the amateur, so the poser, they just, they just think they're going to get them right away, right off the bat. Uh, no matter how good of a presentation you give or how great you, sh you know, how, how good you share the opportunity, they're just, they're not, they're not buying it yet. But yeah. what, the am what the amateur does is they expose the opportunity um, and this is key. So they, they understand that it's going to be a process. Let's just say it's a two week process. They understand that it's going to be about two weeks before, um, you know, they're going to get an answer. So they, they reach out, they share the opportunity, they start to expose them. You know, if you were to tell me, hey, um, you know, I want to get started, but I, I don't really want to buy leads. You know, I've never really worked anywhere where I actually have to buy leads or, or um, put money into a business. Normally business pays me, right? right. Okay, well, what that, that amateur misses is what the professional does, and I'll tell you in a second. So they just... They understand that you need to expose and drip on them over time. They're not going to get them on the first call, but they're kind of unorganized about doing it. You know, they don't take notes when they're talking to them the first time. They don't figure out what problem they need to solve. And then when it comes down to it, they don't have an end goal or an end date of when they're, when they're going to close in on them and say, hey, you know, we've been, you know, Arturo, you and I have been talking about this for about two weeks or so. What is it? What information do I need to give you or what questions um, do you need answered in order for you to make a decision to move forward? Mm. Either way, I'm cool. I just need to know what it is that we're missing here, right? They don't do that. The professional, on the other hand, they go ahead and they expose the opportunity. They understand it's going to be over a course of time. But what they do is they ask, hey, Arturo, what is it that's, what is it that's keeping you from making a decision? And he says, well, you know, I don't want to buy leads. Okay, I, I completely understand. That's actually exactly where I was at. You know, I, I definitely didn't want to buy leads when I first started, but... I actually started to fear staying where I was at far more than trying something new and failing at it, right? I want to stay there. So I addressed it. I agreed with it. And I shared a little bit of my perspective. And then I, I dive into leads. Well, the next time, you know, different lead options. The next time I talk to them, talk to Arturo, I share a story about how, you know, a father with a daughter who's driven wants, you know, wants to make this thing happen. He just purchased you know, a $4 lead and was able to turn it into, turn it into a $1,200 commission. I just solved his problem very strategically on the next time that I exposed him. Right. And if I'm, if I'm in communication with him, cause you have to have an email, a phone number and a name for every person you come into contact that you might want to bring into this business. If I, if we're on an email campaign and I'm, I'm sending him stuff, exposing him that way, if he's on my Instagram, I'm going to share a story about it. So he does see it right? Like this is getting really strategic about what you're doing. And then the professional, what they do that the amateur and the poser don't is they have an end goal as to when they're going to close in. So they understand it's a process. Let's just say it's two weeks. They follow up three, four times, expose them to the business. And then at the very end, they go in and they go in for the close, right? So it looks wow. like, looks like Arturo, um, uh, looks like, you know, we can get you your, your exam material. We can send your contracts, whatever it may be. Um, and then there's a little bit more of, of trust there. And it's not like a lot of other people who are in the recruiting business who are just blasting people all day, you know, right. it's more, uh, it's more personal. So yeah. it's understanding the, the recruiting side to it and then being able to duplicate it for your team, but helping your team understand that it's not just a call. Oh, I didn't hire him, you know? So. Yeah. That's and I think that, I think that's good because I, I caught something in there where it's like you're listening with the intent. Right. And you're trying to figure out what are the motivating factors? What are the things that this person would kill for? What are the things that this person would run through a brick wall for? What are those things that are important to them that if they achieve something, 
it would affect that thing that they love, right? So when you mention my daughter is driven, it's like you got to be asking one, asking good questions and then listening for those things. And then three, trying to uh, walk them through how you have had experience, you know, somebody's had experience of solving a problem because there's a gap that they're trying to uh, to mm -hmm. to cross, right? That somebody that's already done it that's just like them is powerful. Yeah, absolutely. It's really those three things. It's like those three types of recruiters. You just got to work to become the professional. And it's not going to be like that in the beginning. You're going to, you know, I started off as a poser, then I moved into being an amateur, and I'm a professional, you know, but it's a process. And I think that that hopefully relaxes a lot of your shoulders. If you guys are trying to build a team and you're at a, at, at a point where you're stuck, well, that time where you hop on a call and share the opportunity or someone on your team does, and you don't get them right, right away, don't check that off as this is why we're staying at 500 because I can't get someone on board. No, it's just, it's a process. You got to understand that. And like, you know, Arthur and I have said, you got to fall in love with that. Yeah, 100%. Well, yeah, you definitely have dropped some nuggets here for growing an agency. And I'm just curious if there's, uh, you know, thousands of agents will be seeing this and if they're looking for um, a better situation or if they're just going through the, hitting this glass ceiling and looking for some coaching when they're like, hey, I heard you say that you did X, Y, and Z in a short period of time. I want to get more information from you. Where can they reach out to you? Yeah, I'll give them my email. So it's my first name. It's Ashley, A-S-H-L-I. And it's at safehavenagency.com. And then my Instagram as well. Um, it's just Ashley Gronberg. So a little at sign next to my name, Ashley Gronberg. And then I'll drop my phone number too. It's 480 Eight five nine one four four five. For sure. Well, Ashley, after um, much of it and um, trying to get everything to work, this definitely was phenomenal. I'm sure this won't be um, the last time we have you on. But thank you so much for hopping on and kind of sharing some knowledge with us. No, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, and I love what you're doing. Keep uh, keep sharing it with the world so we can see how it's done. But uh, I appreciate you big time, and hopefully, I'll get to see you uh, maybe in Miami or something. For sure, for sure. Awesome. Well, yeah, guys, thank y'all so much for tuning in. I hope you um, took tons of notes. I know I did. And uh, we'll see you in the next Rainmaker podcast. We'll see you soon. Hey, I know you just enjoyed this video, but I've got a great one for you right here. Make sure you go ahead and click it right now and get a ton more of our free information that's going to show you how to go from zero to 100K per month.